All right, let's mute desktop audio. And we're gonna start the, the DOS grind. Off we go. It's time for your 3 a.m. DOS appointment. Yes, honey. <sighs> All right, so where were we last time? I think we solved our packet issues, but found that we need to use a larger memory model. So what we shall do is back it up. That was fast. No, it wasn't. A thousand files? What? What have I put in there? Huh. Okay. All right, so bot, and we're going to name this, going to tag it. Um, hey, Kaz, we're going to tag this one, bot. Com, there we go, because we're going to probably move to the exe format today. Where's face cam? We don't have a face cam. Maybe I should put it on. Uh, I'd have to stick it to my desk somehow, unless it's going to look down at you like pathetic style, which I don't want to do. It's not very charismatic. Okay, so we have our test program, we have our configs, we have our docs. I, I'm not going to give you that. We have our dev environment. Hey, KC, what's up? How you doing? All right, so let's run our test, I guess, and see if it fails. It should fail. I'm not, I'm not gonna give you anything, dude. I'm doing okay. Um, trying to work on my sleep issues. I had two cups of coffee today and I have some tea now and hopefully, hopefully that'll help. Okay, so that just hangs. And we know why. We discovered last stream that we just didn't have enough memory. Yeah, it's a little bit ASMR. Put some music on. Um, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have to start over a little bit. Um, let's look at what our test program actually does. Um, so it just prints back the bytes. Hey, Arya, what's up? So let's enter our development hole um, and we're going to just kind of start deleting old stuff we're not using. What version of MTCP is this? Twenty thirteen. So while we're at it, we're probably just going to upgrade to the 2021 version. Did I delete two things at once? What? I don't think so. Should that be in the bin? Restore, please. Do I love my modded Skyrim? What? Okay, um, we're not going to be using the Insight Debugger. We've got NASM there, we've got MTCP, we've got NE2000. So let's install MTCP now. What was my favorite Bethesda game? Um, I kind of liked Oblivion. Um, I played through Skyrim, but I managed to half-ass it by accident and skipped to the end of the game. So there wasn't any challenge at all. Sorry, Firefox, are you gonna load? No, I did not mod Oblivion. All right, so let's search up for MTCP DOS. Taking a chill vibe here. It's at brutman.com. And so let's grab the source code and the official version. Should probably grab the user documentation too, right? And the zip of the binaries. Mm. 
we should save this. Um, and we got the zip. All right, so we've got all the files, I think. Firefox has indicated to me that it has the files. Um, so let's go to my downloads and grab these files. Was there another one? No. And we're just going to, I guess, dump them in docs. We'll create an MTCP directory. And let's dump this into our drive C as MTCP. Um, there's samples there. I'm not sure what this is for. Sample config. Has anything changed with the configuration? It doesn't look like it. No. So our current configuration should be fine. So we can delete that samples directory. What's this 00 MTCP? That should be the readme, I think. 2020 version. Was there not a 2021 version? I don't know why I was so convinced that, I that there was a 2021 version. 2020, uh, there was two 2020 versions. Okay. So we have these files, let's remove, uh, we can keep those things, why not? Um, then we have our code over here, which unfortunately is going to have to have some major renovations. That's okay. I think that's going to be a headache, but it shall be fine. So let's reopen up our development environment and try doing ping card slurp, can it? Uh, what files do we have? HT get. Let's go grab my website, see if that works. Yep. All right, that is a dated website referencing Freenode. Probably should upgrade that sometime. So we have our bot code there. We have our TCP include there, which we're gonna have to dump. We've got our TCP include dot new, which we will dump. Our lib dot new, which we will dump. And our test dot log, which we will dump. And our dot three, I have so much junk here. And the TCP lib we can dump. So let's go back to our documents. And grab the source code. Um, there's a developers.pdf file. That's the developer documentation. So we're gonna need that. Uh, I live in Australia. Um, the second amendment just doesn't really apply to me at all. Okay, so we're gonna grab TCP lib. Drive C. My hand is not working very well today. Um, code. TCP lib. And we're just gonna dump everything in here, I guess. Are you telling me I'm Antifa? What? What is wrong with you? What happened to you? Um, and we'll probably want to find, we'll go to apps and we'll grab, uh, is there a sample here? I don't remember them having a sample. That would have been very helpful. Um, why don't we just grab that sample and the configuration file and we'll use that for our bot.cpp. Um, and the make file, is there anything significantly different? 
doesn't look like it. Looks basically the same. And we should have a mtc.p.configuration file here. Yep. So we should move that to, no, we'll keep that there. Okay, so we have our files. Let's start editing them. So, um, copy, let's do vimdiff bot sample.configuration. Do I feel oppressed by the lockdowns? Not really, no. How about you? You live in America. You're an American. Oh, why is that going to the end of the line? Okay, that's good. How... Yeah, we'll just copy that. And we'll add tracing. Do you feel like your God-given rights are being taken away? Yes, I think it's enroaching on my liberties being an American and all. Why don't you just buy a gun? You really want that. You seem to be edging closer and closer to it. We're not going to use TCP listen code. Um, we're not going to use ICMP. Tracing is on by default. TCP max sockets. Yep. So that looks fine. Looks a lot cleaner. Um, why is that marked as executable? Why is... Just don't mark everything as executable, okay? Does DOS do that? Did I just not notice that? Okay. So we have our bot code here. Let's, let's just look at um, the files that we need to actually compile. So we're going to look at the make file that we have. And we're just going to look at all the objects. So let's just quickly do ls. Your gun was taken away by Antifa. So now it overflowed into 255 guns and you're the star of your club. That's cool. Kaz is joking, Casey. Um, so we have all those files. So we have utils. We're not going to use UDP. You probably are going to use trace, timer, TCP sock manager, TCP packet, IP type, IP, IP assembly, ETH type, ARP, DNS. Okay, so let's just dump those in our objects. Please. That seems fine. That seems fine. This seems fine so far. Gatorade is valid and wholesome. What? What is Gatorade? Do they have that in Australia? I don't know why I'm asking you. All right, so we have those. The sugar and salt drink. So let's just move, make your old, move bot.cpp, old rm sample.config, and we're going to move sample.cpp as bot.cpp, and move bot.2.c into old, and then move old up a level. All right, so who's going to bet that this just has a bunch of errors? Me. Okay, that was a quick error actually. No reference to symbol, static assert. What? Static assert. Did 
Does it define it somewhere? It should define it somewhere. Do I need to include types.h? It should be able to include that. No reference to symbol static assert line 513. Error percent. Yeah, that's a little bit how we're going to go today. Um, I'm actually pretty hot right now because I have this gaming laptop next to me transcoding something. Let's look at this. Um, look for types.h. It should include types.h. Let's follow this logic. Includes DOS, includes ARP. It should definitely have, it's an MSI laptop. It's a quad core pre Ryzen AMD machine. Okay, let's include types.h here and see if that helps. Maybe you should have a few lockdowns. You're missing out on the lockdown fun. No reference to symbol static assert still. So, is my compiler set wrong? If def turbo C types union static assert, what if we just def? Oh, it's aliasing it to underscore underscore on static assert. What does Whatcom have a static assert? Let's see. It wants me to use Whatcom 2, doesn't it? Well, I'm not going to, because your debug is broken. Oh, hey, Carlos, what's up? So we're gonna be smart about this and uh, just disable static asserts, because why not? You know, this can only be a good decision on my end. Okay, will that be happy with the compiler? Cannot open file obj tcp lib obj. No write access. Um, okay. COVID doc dot website is so slow. Dot type b yeah, mod plus x with directory name please oops i can't do the type argument so it was giving me an error there because it couldn't write a file because it didn't have a permission to all right is this going to work i'm being a little spooked a little scared a little I don't know. We're also going to have to switch to the exe file format. Um, because as it turns out, we need that for relocation. Bot.obj. Okay, yeah. So this is where we're going to get into some of the stuff. Let's see. CDBot. Bot.cpp. Everything's executable. Okay, let's see. Listen socket. Uh, let's just copy our old bot stuff back here. Actually, let's copy our... Is it the test thing? Let's copy bot.2. 
Yeah, that has some debug stuff, I think. Everyone in my country, my state, should wear a mask in public indoor settings. Um, I'm guessing people don't do that. All right, so we're going to get to some ABI breaks. In its stack requires something different. So in our case, our code requires it to do one TCP socket ring size. So what we're going to do now is just compare the examples and just double check that we're all tight with everything. Um, let's go back to docs. This is a very low energy stream. My cat is under my desk. Apps, sample, sample.cpp. And let's open this up with Vim. And let's see. So at main, you went to the pharmacy the other day to grab some groceries and I believe because there was only a handful of masks with maybe 50 people in a crowded small store, it spooked you so much. Yeah, it would scare me. So we do pass invent. Yep. We don't check the error result because we're very confident that it will just work. All right. We do init stack and we provide a control break handler and a control C handler. Interesting. Interesting. Um, provide control break control C handler. It will probably accept null if we do that, but we will have to learn more about that. All right. We have sockets. You have made that mistake and we'll never do it again. Oh, what's COVID like in uh, Portugal? Is it good? TCP socket, my socket, yep. So DNS resolve, we're not doing that yet. If control break detected, DNS query is running, done. Drive up, drive pending query, get socket. Connect local port server address. And that's the timeout, yeah. Um, then we do packet process single. So pissed that doctors weren't like, just wear a mask until further notice. Portugal is in top country when it comes to vaccination. I'm happy to hear that. Let's see. So nothing looks like it's changed aside from the handler for control break and control C. So let's dive in into the code um, and head on over to drive C. Um, the TCP lib, and I think it would be in utils. So let's just display this. Uh, it's nice and bright so we can see it better. Um, where would be in its stack? That's pass env. Pass optional configuration files in its stack. Um, new control break handler and new control C handler. All right, so it sets them unconditionally. Hmm. I guess we could add a control break handler and a control C handler. That seems fine. So, um, uh, handler control C and handler control break. Um, and yeah, that's the other way around control. Break control. How are things going in Australia? I heard you guys build a big battery. I don't know, maybe. Um, 
Things aren't going that well. Adani Pals Australia. <laughs> I, I was going to say I wish. I wish not. So some of us, South Australia, Tesla built a battery because Elon Musk is like that. Renewables. But Australia does not ever want to get into the renewable market. We love our coal. And that's just the way it's going to be, at least until the current government gets kicked out. But hey, you know, that's not going to happen. Coal percent? Yeah. So let's head on over to here and we're going to add our void interrupt bar handler control break. Yeah, there's a lot of spam on Twitch. Void. So uh, yeah, this is a far thing um, and that does nothing. And we'll just do handler control C and that will do nothing too. Yeah, owncast doesn't have a spam problem yet. All right, let's see if this builds and to what extent it runs. TRC stream is not a thing. TRC stream, clean up socket. So how do we clean up the socket in this? Was TRC stream an implementation detail? I guess so. Well, that's gone. Let's try doing the old W make. Undefined symbols, MTCP, sleep, cold, enabled, release, time slice, enabled, IPP checksum. So I'm missing some kind of file. Did I miss the utils file? How did I miss that? IP checksum is an undefined reference. Um, then we have UDP stuff. Um, I'm not trying to use UDP though. Oh, that's because I have UDP disabled and thus we don't have DNS. That's fine. We'll disable compiling DNS while we're at it and UDP. And we might have to W make clean this. Yeah. Old people are access getting access to the third shot. 90% have the first shot. 80% have two shots and are completely vaccinated. That's very good. I think that's around the same stats as my current area. It's very good. Should I open the teapot so it can cool down faster? Okay, IP checksum is undefined. That's in IP assembly. Did I add IPASM.obj? You're not normally proud of Portugal, but this brings tears to your eyes. I'm very glad about that. Okay, so that compiled. And so now we just have to fix up our test code. Um, so testio.cpp. Um, mm, yeah, we do need to clean this up. So let's find the TLC thing in its stack. 
And we're just going to do our void, interrupt bar, control C handler, or is it handler, control break, void, and nothing goes in it. And the same thing here. So that should fix the test. That's not using a different netcat file, is it? Why is there a netcat file there? Ah, oh, okay. There's a lot of junk around here. All right. So now let's run test. Oh, and it doesn't crash. Why doesn't it crash? Oh yeah, it should crash. Hang on a second. It's going to crash. So we're going to have to set this to use X's first. Um, so let's do change bot.com with dot XE, remove the dot com dot that, that deletes it twice. Um, Do you think X's are sexies? What? So. System XE. Oh, uh, it was system DOS. Have I accidentally been making X's this entire time? Let's see, file test.exe, file test.com. Just open up test.exe and confirm. Yeah, all right. And what memory model do we have this on? Memory, memory model small. PP args, um, uh, what com DOS memory model. So we want to use, I think it's small, not tiny, but small. Um, so we want to have a code be one segment and data be another one. Small model. I think memory model small is fine. DOS memory model small. There's a Microsoft devlog. This might help. Data pointer size near code pointer size. Yeah, so it's small. That's fine, that's what we want. So let's try running bot. And let's try running test. All right, so let's try running the test program now. So. Bad file name test.com. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it was in drive C code tost.bat, wasn't it? Okay, let's see how this goes. Hmm, not exactly what we want. Uh, 
Um, so we, we were messing with slurp MTUs, but we're going to use an MTU of 1500 now. So we don't exactly need to set MTUs or MRUs or anything like that. So let's do MTU, let's remove that. Um, close without saving, close without saving. Alt F4, unplug computer. Uh, MTCP here, we're not gonna set the MTU either. And let's see if that helps. Yeah, it seems to work. So we have the test working, the uh, input test. Let me just check that the tests are correct. All tests. You like the own cast directory because it's just people's personal streams, some religious stuff, and then highly illegal naked kawaii anime boy stream, which fills you with so much dread. <laughs> I mean, that's how I want the internet to be kind of like, I want people to be able to filter stuff, but I, I really just want it so that people can stream what they want according to the law and not according to Twitch. It's a bit like the movie industry. I, um, there's like two levels of acceptable. There's like legally acceptable, then capitalist acceptable, which is due to advertisers. And so it kind of disappoints me to see just how capitalist acceptable seems to kind of neutralize everything. Um, I wish that, in another words, I wish there was like pre-code internet, you know? Um, <laughs> just people making movies and stuff but for the internet without like uh without like um the motion pictures association of america really getting in there zuckerberg acceptable exactly um you know it's not great as a society to have companies deciding what we uh express ourselves through you know the company is our democracy like ideally you know we have the law and the law is decided you know supposedly democratically um in theory but with the companies we don't even have that we just have like um you know, pay with your wallet, even though if you basically do anything with your money, it's going to flow through the economy and hit everyone eventually. You know, like if I buy merch or use a Patreon for someone that's going to fund whatever Patreon executives are doing, there's really no way to get out of the system of paying for stuff that you disagree with. Um, which is kind of the point of money, isn't it? It's kind of a laundering system, morale-wise, because you can just kind of trade this token around. Um, and it doesn't matter, like, if I give you $50, you can buy something, and it doesn't matter what I use to do to get the money. So, in a sense, there's money laundering but uh, for morality built into capitalism. Or I should say any system that has trade. Um, although capitalism is, is, you know, especially exploitative there. Okay, so what's bot to do? I Guess we should test the bot now. Build a metaverse. I don't want to feel anyone's verse. 
Okay, so this tries to connect to port 666. And... Right now, all the bot does is just echo stuff. So let's try that. Let's, I don't know what happened to my code that had the bot call the C function, but I'll, I'll figure that out later. So let's netcat listen on sudo. Because if you're in Unix, um, you can only listen on ports under 1024 with root access, kind of, you can get permission for it. All right, um, so let's do our, let's do our run.sh and let's do bot.exe and let's see what happens. Hi right there. Streamers beware. And let's just put a big long A. Just copy and paste everything. Okay, that was too much actually. I didn't mean to copy and paste all of that, but I'm glad that it kind of worked. No transmit buffer, big sad. All right, gotcha. Um, before we do head on with fixing things, I do want to just see why our, our test thing is hanging um, with a small MTU. So we're going to set the MTUs to be equal. Your throat is in pain? Why is that? That's not very charismatic. It doesn't make me happy. That's bad news. Let's do an MTU of 500. Uh, 576. I'm going to assume that's the smallest. You can't stream? Why? So slurp setting the MTU was 500 and MIU 500. Um, so this should still work. Um, let's see if this works skipped packet. So it skips a lot of packets when the MRU is pretty small. Um, is that due to packet overhead? Like, is that an MTCP thing? Or is that because I set them to have two different values? Um, let's just try changing MTCP to MRU. I just want to understand why this test is failing. We might need to remove that skip packet thing. Why would it skip a packet? Um, because it doesn't have a buffer. Why does it not have a buffer? That might be some kind of deadlock actually. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah, I, I understand what's happening here. So the packets are set to be 1500, not smaller. And so it's, yeah, okay, that's fine. The reason why this is hanging is because it doesn't have enough packets to reply with all the fragments. Um, and that kind of sucks, but that's okay. That's an expected failure. Um, but that might be something we'll have to think about later. So here we go. That works very well. Um, I just got a message from my friend. Um, I 
I, I, I would like to listen to my message from my friend, but I am streaming. And my friend sent me a voice message, so I cannot do that. Pause stream. Yeah, but then I have to edit the video. I asked them if it's urgent, they can just do a Y slash N. Okay, so we have our test program here. And this is good. This test program is paid off big time here because now we don't have to manually test everything. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a test that will somehow test the output. Okay, buddy, you replied with a voice message. Um, hang on a second. I think this is muted desktop audio. So let me just um, listen to this while I do my work. Uh, tell me if you can hear it. Did you hear that? Oh my God. I'm going to assume you didn't hear that. Okay, that didn't show up like in OBS. So I'm gonna assume that didn't play for you guys. The dog part really got you? Yeah. So we're going to write a second test and this is going to be a little bit annoying because run tests, all tests. We're going to have to refactor this a little bit, but our next test is going to be basically, um, we're going to have to get a way to terminate this test. Why would I feed a dog that? It, we wanted it. So we're just going to, oh, another voice message. Okay. If you can seriously hear that, tell me now so I can just stop doing that. So we have our, you cannot, all right, thanks buddy. So we're actually gonna now send a single line that says X and that's gonna be the, the key to close to stop the program. In fact, we'll do that at the very start. And we will run this. No, this isn't the right program. Would I play a COVID video game once this whole thing blows over? What would it be like? Oh, can I just close the socket in order to quit things? Yeah, why do I need the X there? What the heck? It's not a smart move, is it? All right, um, accept socket, run tests. Um, then we have unbind socket. Wait, run tests, prints X and then it kills DOSBox. All right, so we don't want to kill DOSBox. Oh, it's a socket. So we can just handle it closing on the remote size. Got it. So run tests, that should be, um, run input test and we'll just write test that the bot can receive a certain amount of data. Okay. 
there. You don't have to read packet number. What does read packet number? Reads the packet number. Reads the number. Reads the packet payload as a number. Gets the next packet we're connected to. Um, packet sizes. Max input size. We don't use that. So I'm just cleaning up things a little bit. So we have test sizes there. All tests. And we'll shuffle it before we actually do that. Um, test sizes. Try and check these particular sizes to confirm sending is working. That packet size works. We could use random ones, but I don't know. We could use more, but these hit the general notes. Shuffle them for good fortune. Okay. Um, except socket, bind socket. We'll put get next packet up with the socket stuff. Bind our test server socket. Accepts connection. Uh, closes our test server socket. Launches the test DOS box using a flat pack. See, I'm documenting some stuff at the moment because it's always good. You know, we can probably also make this a relative directory thing. Do I love documentation? Um, like documentation and tests, it's generally just good to have it, but it's expensive to make. Um, it, but it pays off. It's one of those things where, um, I don't know if you've been watching this series so far, but, uh, this is like the ultimate, what do you call it? Oh, the ISO is done. Have to look at that later. Thank you, DVD styler that I spent like an hour struggling with. Um, I don't know. I can't think of the term right now for it. Um, delayed gratification is the name of this stream, basically. Um, and documentation and tests are delayed gratification, but they're so so important. Edging, yes. Has Cos been writing tests on his stream? I wanted to see his Haskell stream this morning, but uh, I had to sleep. Testing is possibly one of the most important things you can do in software. And I'm kind of ashamed that I put it off for so long in this series. When does the ultimate nut come in? I'm not sure. I think that's when you check it into version control. That's the nut. Turns an innocent ID for killing, trolling. Have you been liking Cos's programming streams? Are they like the same vibe as me? He does a, uh, he does a whole different style of programming to me. Build a DOS box, write pack instance. He's okay, you don't know what's going on. Well, you don't know what's going on with my stuff either.
So when we do run tests, um, we're just going to do run input test. Um, and then let's see if this still runs. This should still run. It does not still run. Python is such a weird language to me. I initially really didn't like it. But uh, it's just grown on me because it works and does what I want. You can make a fortune cookie Python program without looking up anything. That's pretty cool. I mean, that is a pretty achievable goal. You're joking? I know that. But I still want to be positive. Like, um, Elixir is pretty cool. You should continue on with your Elixir study. I'm going to push you for that. Can we just close the connection? What happens if we close it? I don't know if that's like an actual connection object. So if we close it, it should stop the program. Remote has closed quitting. Good. Um, yep. Sleep is not defined. That's good. So after that test done, it closes it. And then we shall have it run the next test, which will be a run output test. I didn't look at the updated terms of service. Would I learn anything from it? So right now we're just gonna copy our output test stuff. I mean, PayPal sends me an updated terms of service like every week. So I, I don't care. Let's drop the nums there. And let's explain this test a bit more. Um, send our long packet. Let's see what we get back. get the packet uh, value, get the value contained in the packet, do the same for any remaining packets, add the sums up to something that has gone um, there's nothing new. Add the sums up to, to check no packets were mangled or dropped. Like a bigger, smarter move here would be like to hash the packet and its contents. But I'm really just not big brain for that. Okay. Um, The biggest unnut moment. All right, so our test program is going to run TOST, of course. And what will TOST do? Code. Um, let's edit TOST.bat. And we'll just run test twice, huh? How about that? See if this works. It should. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because we didn't accept another connection.
we closed that connection and then we didn't accept it again, um, which isn't good. You don't want to do that. Okay, so running multiple tests seems to work. Um, so now the tricky part is how do we test certain sizes? If we go to our test program here, um, we can, obviously we can um, have it so that depending on like the program arguments or something. What was all this about? I don't know. Let's read this for a second. So that would copy it and then queue it. So that would send it back. And we decided that was a bad idea. Um, yep, packet. Packet exmit buff processing packet. Um, so process packets there. What does that do? We will probably have to break out this code here or do something based on like um, the test mode that we're in. We'll probably have a switch statement for test mode. Um, okay, while well, process packets. So we need to be able to What do we need to be able to do? We need to be able to read in a value sent to us. You know what? Um, let's just do the test thing right now. Um, if string come Paris argv one input invalid test on argv1. All right, so this should now error if we try to run the test without specifying which test we want to run. Let's do wmake. Mm. I should put at the start of this and remove that TCP buffer thing. Um, I've been enjoying tea recently. Okay, so, and we're also going to be doing if argc doesn't equal two. They're going to put usage s.xe test and then we're going to have a global um value called current test and that we can that will be no te uh, test none or <laughs> okay no ignore that don't clip that don't clip what i wrote um we're going to do define test input um as test zero There we go. And then we'll have test output, which we test one. Testing input or no, we'll just do test I selected and we'll just write which current test we have. Um, and then we'll just do an else if there. 
or put an output. If anyone's ever going to ask me this, the reason why I put brackets on the same line is because it just looks like it makes more sense when you're reading the code. Like you have indentation that kind of matches things. I used to be someone that put a bracket on their own line, a brace, but uh, I know I read code complete and it had a uh, pretty good argument. Uh, all right, so input test should be test input test zero, test output, okay. And so we'll do if current test is one, then we will do this. Sorry, current test equals test input. Else. Um, we'll just return one. Uh, and we'll always free the buffer. We'll always grab the data because we're going to be using that. Um, wait a second. What are we using the len there for? So we got TCP payload length. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do did nothing unknown test. And so this should kind of just loop forever then. Uh, assuming we edit out tossed dot bat input output and then we'll just do tossed and see if this does anything. Uh, it's going to error, isn't it? Because I'm not running the test harness. Test one selected, unable to connect to host. That's reasonable. Test zero selected. Yep. Should, should select test one next. And that times out and fails. Great. We're making actual good process on this today. Maybe we'll get to some actual DOS, DOS programming. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Okay, so the thing is, is that when we get a, we have to communicate to the test program. That we want. Um, we should probably also put which test we're running running output test, running input test. Great. So we're going to have to somehow ask for which bytes we want. Um, does the C ha library have like an A to I thing? Does Whatcom have A to I? Let's check its manual. Um, over here, buddy. Um, it would be in C lib. What comes C? So we're going to look for something that can let us pass a string into conversion functions. That would be page 13. This is the table of contents. Oh shit, that's a long table of contents. My my god, dude. All right, we're gonna have to skip to the index then. Um, holy Jesus. Jesus, my Jesus. All right, we're gonna be looking for A to I or I to A. See, if I had to program in the DOS days, I'd be out of my mind. There's no way I could I could do this. Libraries and function macros.
It's Jesus's birth month. Don't be rude. That's true. I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm going to boil some more tea in a minute. Um, I'll probably do that. Should I have a quick break now? We've been streaming for about halfway through. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, quick break time while I go get some more tea. All right, I'm back. Wow, that peaked really bad. Am I peaking today? I hope not. Let me move my shirt down and hope that fixes it. You'd tell me if I was peaking my microphone, right? Um, I'm drinking Lipton black tea. Okay. Remove my shirt down. No, I have my microphone attached to my shirt. Um, that way I can move about and you'll never be able to know I could be drinking tea. I could be somewhere else in the room. You have a quality mic which you can use for your streams? What type of mic is it? All right, so we have some code here. String to int which is probably what we want. Um, that is A to I. Yes, A to I. But do we have like scanf? We have scanf, so we might as well use that, right? The safer C library extension provides the scan FS, which is a safer. Hang on. What is happening with this terminal, buddy? The, the colors, what happened? Oh, that's right. The only color schemes they have are like, White on black is just broken. I mean, come on, dude, what happened? Um, I guess we can, uh, green on black. I don't know how this is solved on my actual machine. Hang on, let me check. Oops, I tried to open up a tab on my computer. Did... Yeah, so it uses white text. You just sent me a picture of your microphone. It's a Mayano Lavalier microphone. That's pretty cool. You're, you're getting to the lav game area. That kind of stuff is good for like uh, meetings and stuff, I imagined. Um, do you have, is this normal man page functionality? I guess. Uh, do you have like a proper sound card or I'm not sure how Macs are. Maybe Macs don't have extremely noisy sound cards, but I found that with my PC, I had to get a separate audio interface just to have like not noise in the background of it. Like there's always going to be noise, but ideally you want, um, not noise. Uh, you don't have a sound card. You have a microphone port. You want to go in the silent box? What? Okay. Max have clean audio by default. That's good. Um, yeah, clean audio. Very good. So the scan F, so there's scan F and S scan F. I'm looking for S scan F. But also, does this not have like length control? Um, 
just seems like a function that will just ruin your Like, is there no way to, like, can you scan F to, o to overflow stuff? Yeah, on your desktop. Macs seem pretty good. Maybe one day I'll get a Mac and then I can develop for it and be upset. <laughs> In the practice of programming, Cunningham and Pike discuss this problem and they solve it by using a buffer. Okay. Streaming in the Enchoic Chamber at Orfield Laboratories, Minnesota for that crisp audio. Yeah, any comments on my audio is good too. Like, uh, Aria, do you think my audio is crisp? Okay. So, we're gonna have to, it is, I'm glad. Um, the keyboard sounds really get cut out by the noise. Um, the noise stuff, so. Yeah. So let's do scanf int size, so let's do um, we'll print back a packet of the same size. Can I lick my microphone? I would rather not do that. That would be unpleasant for everyone involved. Um, one thing that like, I'd, I'd like to understand is how they do, uh, how they do sound for adult movies and stuff like that. Cause there's no way they're just like using the camera mic, are they? As amateur as it's supposed to look, it's like, nah bro. We ain't using the camera mic for this. Um, although phones have good microphones. So we're gonna use scanf. Um, in string is gonna be our data. Um, uh oh. That's why the camera guy comments. I mean, so you have the camera guy, you also have to have the sound guy, you know, he's got a boom mic above them. You know, it's not, you can't be the cameraman and the sound guy, which is kind of like, it gives me a lot of respect for the, for the actors that are like doing point of view stuff. Where they're, like, they're trying to act and then they're trying to film and make sure the levels are okay and like things are exposed. It's a lot of work. Like, wow. See that, that shows up as peaking. Does that peak? Does that sound bad? Like when I go, wow, uh, wow. I know, I'm not gonna get annoyed by it. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem like it. OBS is, uh, I don't trust, see? Okay, so when I, right now, when I just said when I and trust, that did that, peak that sound bad nope yeah it's obs is like red levels are a bit misleading which is bad because i have a compression thing going so i can talk kind of low and then if i talk loud it cuts it down so that's the only meter i have to check things Okay, so we're gonna have to scan F. For now, let's just print out data. And would I clip my toenails on stream? I don't know, I'd rather not It'd be a short stream. It gets in there. Yeah, I like have a Frank Reynolds toe knife. No, I, I couldn't do that. I think that's like way too gross, even for me. Um, I don't know why, uh, that's hygiene stuff. 
Uh, it doesn't. Uh, how am I going to convert? I know that this is a byte string. So if we do a byte, send me I please. There should be a safe for work hub for hygiene videos. I mean, yeah, it'd be good to like, do you need, do you need like to even go that level for explaining hygiene? Like you do need to see people clean themselves in order to understand, like, can you not use models and stuff? Like, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying like, Okay, so that does work. Um, that, okay, so we're gonna write, send me I please. And then once we get a packet, we're going to print. The length of the packet. You need to see those toes getting clean as an oddly satisfying thing. I mean, that's just not my thing, I guess. All right. So we've made some code where we send data. It's like power washing. I don't think it's like that. I think, I think you're going entirely off track. Oh, that didn't work. Oh. Um, what, what happened? Print F data. Okay. So let's see, let's run our test. We might want to run one test after the other. I'm not too sure. Got data T. What? Should we be sending the test over the socket? No, we won't do that. Um, let's just flip around the order because we know one test works. Um, we're going to do M drive C code, bot code, test code, test. Why is my caps lock on? No, it would be post dot bat. Yeah. Let's switch those around. Did I fix the bytes thing on stream? Huh? Which bytes thing? The answer is likely yes, but I just want to confirm. Last stream, we did go down a bit of a rabbit hole, um, but we did figure it out. The sending bytes, um, we correctly diagnosed it. And so today we're kind of fixing it. Um, which is a bit kind of weird to say, but yeah, we, it turned out the problem was fixable if we used a larger memory module model. Oh, Hey, that shouldn't, that shouldn't work. That sh that should cancel things. Hey, 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 um, let's tap out tests actually make the connection. And then I guess close the connection. That's ah, too much effort there. Um, I don't want to throw an exception, but it might be good to throw an exception. Um, if not, test failed. You know what, let's just run all tests regardless. That's fine. 
but we'll just make it so it doesn't print um, so much stuff. So currently we have test one and it quits. And now something's happened here where the pipe breaks immediately. Did I do something here? I, I mean, of course I've done something here. Test, run output test on, okay, that's what I did. There's videos that are really taboo, but safe work that people like to watch to satisfy their curiosity. And you want to be the guy that lets them stream that? That's fair. Asking for 421 bytes, but it does not say it has received that message asking them for that. So what shall we do about that? Uh, inspect our code, probably, right? Um, hmm. Oh, I didn't put a new line. So let's do else if our test equals test output. And we will just write that we got data. See, if you don't want to print new lines in C, then it's not going to flush your buffer. So, hmm, I see. I understand. Um, I've made the elementary mistake of not null terminating my uh, my junk. Um, I don't know why I assumed, I, I remembered that I needed to null terminate it, but uh, I just forgot, I guess. Okay, let's try testing again. Okay, now it says it doesn't have any data, which is, it is up, it is, it could be an improvement. It might not be. Um, so data, it should be printing some data. But is data, data is not the buff. Um, mm. So data is the XMIT buff, but we're looking for packet. Um, okay, that's fine. So let's change this to out uh, buff out. And then data out. I think that will be fine. And then we'll just also do that with um, data in, since we're using two buffers. I think, no, this isn't how we do it. Um, data out should be buffer out plus size of TCP buffer. What? What's your favorite cosmological system in a video game? Probably spores. Spore is pretty good. So we have data out. We also need to have data in. Oh, hey, swag boy. I don't know if Ari is still here, but probably not. Um, so that's the IP, TCP is the TCP header. Uh, swag boy just followed me. 
I don't know if they're here, but thanks, swag boy. Is it plus TCP header? Let's see. Let's see. The CEO of the firm. Oh, okay. Do co-ops even have CEOs? I don't think it all works like that, does it? Because CEOs are elected by a board. Okay, so I get an error there, but it tries to run the program that errors. President, Prime Minister, I mean, what do you actually do? It should probably be labeled after that. Yeah, I don't think co-ops have a hierarchical structure at that point. Um, it would be cool to have like a role-based structure. Okay, so buff in and len and buff have not been declared. Data in equals that would be TCP. It's a flat structure, yeah. What happened to Len? What did I do with Len? Role based appropriate credentials. Yeah. But I'm also a nerd. So is this the is this the third member, Aria? So len out. Yeah, role based access control, but I'm sure there's a million different names for it. Um, len out. Let's see if this compiles. Buff has not been declared. That is true. Where are we using buff? They are the future member if they want to be part of this awesome cop. Yeah, I asked my uh, solicitor. I asked my solicitor and um, what, how much they charge and they haven't got back to me. Scanf. What is the test input asking for? So I might ping them about that, but we do have to go over those. We have to make a better agreement that solidifies the roles and stuff, which uh, is boring stuff. So it's not really happening, is it, at the moment? Send me I, please. Ah, okay. I think you like, sorry, you think you like LCF better than when languages try to shorten it because you forget if it's LCF or ELIF. Well, usually it's ELIF, I think. What, what's using LCF? Is that a Perl thing? Are you, are you blaming all this confusion on Perl? Uh, they want us to send I. So we shall send blaming everyone but yourself to <laughs> the Perl module of Elsif. Uh, I don't like that at all. I, I really did try to use Perl, but when I read that the syntax is like 
magic. Well, not magic, but like uh, there's no formally defined syntax. I was like, I'm not a fan of that, to be honest. Like I want, I want something. Okay, so scan app is hanging um, because I have not given it the data. Golang, ah. Golang is, is a mixed bag. Why is this not minimizing? Oh. Golang is such a mixed bag since it's like C done right, but we're in an age where we don't need another C. Apps built with Rust and Go are pretty good from an end user perspective. Um, they don't like it otherwise as a systems programmer. Um, I like my shared libraries. Um, I do like app images and stuff. More people should use app images and flat packs and things like that. So right now we need to look at, is, is that the syntax for scanf? Let's try running the test again and see if it errors. Oh, what call car const? Wait, does scanf take a stream? Scanf, S scanf, ah. Whoopsie, whoopsie. If I can find the code, I'm, I'm phasing. Everyone says flat pack is bad, but never comes up with anything better. I mean, what's, there's not much bad about flat pack. It, it does a lot of things that aren't done with uh, stuff like it manages dependencies and it um, isolates applications to run with runtimes. It's, it's very nice. So car const, car const. Ah, so. I, yes, my data in is a, is a car const. Easiest way to install proprietary stuff on Linux. I mean, app image is pretty good too. Uh, the reason why I like Flatpak is just because it's more reliable. Um, Cause having a whole bunch of just Linux distro junk being changed between distros, it's just nice to have like a known good copy I can download and run. All right, so we found out that they want us to send X. So what we're going to do is memset, um, buff out um, a size and then we're going to set, set the data length to that and then we're going to enqueue it. App image is XE of Linux or no, uh, it, well, it depends. It, it's one way to pack stuff inside a single binary. Place XE with MSI. No, it doesn't install anything like MSI does. Um, excuse me, why are you not sending stuff? They want us to send X. X ret I, and let's see if it in Q properly. Negative five. The heap is corrupted. Oh boy. I've messed up here. Um, what have I done wrong here? 
Let's try setting it to one and then sending a packet of length one. I might be using memset wrong. All right, so, oh, it asked for 4,000 bytes. Oh, that's interesting. That's something I didn't think of it. Um, hmm. We can't put uh, 4,000 bytes in a single packet. So there's two things we can do here. One way is we can kind of fragment it, um, but that's a bit tricky with the buffers we have. Um, the other thing we can do is just say no. Um, so what we're going to do is just send um, no. We'll send a packet of size zero. You got to watch a car? What? All right, so they want us to send 2000. And that times out. Why is that? It doesn't enqueue it. Oh, what if we just do bigger than a hundred? So we might be learning some stuff today. Oh, right. The packet size is. Wait, what is the packet size? Why can't we send 200? How much size do we actually have to send packets with? Yeah, enjoy your lunch. You got nothing, you got burger. That's pretty sick. So we'll send a packet with an X. And then we'll have a test case here where um, hmm. you know, we probably could send lots of packets. Let's try that. Um, but we had to find out how much we can actually send. Um, so what we can do is like or int i equals zero i underscore under size i plus equals uh, 100, I guess. Let's send it in batches of 100. Um, 100, then we We'd have to modulo this somewhere here, but then we'd have to do packet process single drive ups. And then we'll have to free the buffer. Mm. 
and then just keep sending that. We'll have to get another buffer here. Alright, so buffer out, we get that. Length out. What is length out? Could be length in. So we're kind of seeing that we have two distinct things to do here. Um, so we should probably move. So data in, do we use data in? Yeah, we use data in, then we use data out as well. So we're gonna put data out there. We're gonna put our data out here. And we're going to do our buff out here. And we're gonna copy and paste code for now um, because we need to do that. That's just what we need to do sometimes. Before we refactor things, we need to copy and paste them. What the hell? That should be TCP buffer get xmit buff there. Is that a bug? That looked like a bug. All right, so TCP buff out. We have, what's TCP? So that's for the buffer in. And that's IP, TCP. So all that is used to calculate the in packet and then we have buff out there. And then what we do is we can remove that. And we can try this and maybe this will work. I hope it works. All right, so we have some syntax errors starting at line 63. Okay, so I forgot to add an extra parenthesis there. That's fine. Uh, what do we have? Uh, then we'll just do W make. And that works now. Okay, let's try testing it. So it should send some factor of 100. So we ask for 840 bytes and we get 900. That's actually pretty close. Um, that's closer than not at all, actually. Um, <laughs> that's closer than I expected. I expected it to break. So what we're going to do here is try and figure out what steps we need to take. Um, so while we're under size, but it uh, increases by 100. So The first step will be zero. Second step will be 100, 200, 300, 400. So what we want to have it done is so if we like get something that's 50, we want our step to be um, ideally each step. Uh, we need to get some kind of remainder. I know this is a division issue. This is where like basic maths comes in handy. But since I'm a programmer, I flooded my brain with like kernel stuff. And so I don't have room for basic maths in my head. So let's say we get 50 into i equals zero. 
so 50 is less than size, sorry, i is less than size, then afterwards it'll increase to 100 and do the check. So we basically need to, I guess, get the length and divisit by 100. But wait, what if the size is greater than 100? Hmm. Let's just play with some numbers real quick in Python, huh? So we have a Python copyright notice. So let's say we have a packet of size 50. Um, okay, so 50 is divisible by 100 by 50. So what about, hmm. If the packet is 150, yeah, it still has 50 left over. Uh, but we're but we're at i here, so i is zero. We're kind of we should look at this more as a position where we're in, in the buffer. And so the buffer says we're at position zero. Okay, um, and so we need to check how much is left over the remainder, if you will. Um, hmm. We want to consume chunks of a hundred at a time. Um, so we have a variable that's zero and then we'll do that to a hundred. And that can be like true for any part of it. Um, at any point, we could be at a point that is a multiple of a hundred. But there is still more than a hundred left over. So we need to check if, what we need to do is we need to clamp the value. We need to clamp it between zero and a hundred. Um, because next time we will send a hundred. Um, and so what we need to do is get the remaining value. So it would be something like size minus I, and we need to clamp it um, to a hundred. So does Python have a clamp function? Clamp, port math, math.clamp. Uh, Python, do you have a clamp function? they might not have it. It's such a simple function um, that they might just not include it. Let's start with Python clamp. Untold secret of the clamp function in Python. And you have to define it yourself. Okay. Uh, thanks. So let's just do def clamp a b um, and what we do is we do um, if A is less than B, then we return A, otherwise we return B. And so clamp five, 10 should be five, clamp 10, 10 should be 10, clamp 10, 11 should be that. Yeah, so let's say we're stepping through the loop. We have a packet that is a size like 576. So we start from zero, which would be 576 minus zero, and we clamp it by 100. Then we can increment 200, 300, 400, 500. Gotcha. You want to put your T in the microwave? Please don't. So int amount equals size minus I, clamp size minus I and step. And we'll put step equals a hundred there. Uh, convince you not to, I don't know, microplastics. So does Watcon have a clamp function?
It has some simmed stuff. Um, we'll just have to define a clamp function real quick. I mean, why not just boil the kettle? You want tea, but you don't want to get a cup because then you have to clean it. Oh. There we go. We've got a little clamp function there. All right, so let's see if this works. Life is suffering. Yeah, a little bit. Uh -huh. So this is chaotic. Oh, the test seemed to work. Um, excuse me? What? The codes seem to work, although we do get a lot of stuff here about waiting for um, a buffer. Can you have some tea from your mouth so you don't have to use a cup? I have a teapot right here and I could get you a cup. It's okay. It's fine. And you have to wash it. I'll wash it for you. I have a dishwasher. You, you don't have to wash my mouth, but I have to wash my mouth regardless, right? So if I'm going to do the work, you like the taste. Um, okay. That's, um, hmm. Why is that not accept? That's trying to run the input test. Okay, that's a little weird. Um, did I break the other test? Let's check. Let's switch the tests around. Um, but it looks like we've confirmed that this can send IO stuff and that worked. That was a lot easier to handle. And then we'll just have to clean up the code. Um, close the terminal, please. Um, and let's edit the Don't brush your teeth for a week and let you drink a cup of tea from your mouth. Um, it's like kombucha. I want to brush my teeth though. List status out of range. So something's happening here. I've broken the test. Remote has closed quitting. List status is out of range. Let's close most of these. So what has happened here? List status is out of range. So it's not able to get the actual data. Do we not enqueue it or something? I'm, I don't want to deny you flavored kombucha, but we can, we can make it ourselves. Just not, not that way. It's not actually kombucha. You need like a, you need know, like a, a scoby. I've made kombucha before. We can we can totally do that. Uh, well, uh, how about I just make you some kombucha? This status out of range. Line 75. Is this a problem in my Python test code? Pre 
print status. Okay, well, let's just see what packet we get. So we get a packet that's completely zeros. Um, oh, that is wrong there. That is a, that is a race boy. If I've ever seen a boy. I was grabbing the buffer to the packet before I actually needed it. Scoby is a thick, rubbery and cloudy mess. I just got to spit in the cup. I don't want to spit in the cup though. I prefer not to actually, if anything, it would make me, well, unhappy to, um, if you can believe that. All right, let's just try checking out our input test again. I know this isn't the best test runner. Let's up our step to, I don't know, a thousand. See if that works. I know there's some packet overhead, but we should be able to send TCP packets with size a thousand, right? No, we can't. What about 500? Let's try that. Okay, that's 500, that's good. Um, that's good enough for me, basically. And it confirms that we can send and receive packets. Um, that's good news here. We did it, kind of. Um, let's comment this. Send a request for bytes get the bytes in response count the bytes in the packet add the do the same for any remaining packets. Add the sums together to make sure we have all the packets. So this seems to work, which is surprising because that means this is kind of the end of the, uh, the big packet boy. Um, I don't know how to feel about this. Um, we will have to refactor some of the code into shared code and move some stuff around. But we still have time left. So let's do that. So let's look, we have a dot, we have a test and we have a test.py. Okay. Then we have a code. We have a tost. This should be, I guess, test. We have test, our little test program. We have our bot program. Um, and we have our objects. We have old, which we can get rid of. We have a bot. Um, so long, basically. So what we shall have to do is, I mean, I'll, I can live with the test.bat being here. It doesn't bother me. But I do want to name it test.bat. Cat, are you vomiting over my floor right now? 
No, it sounds like you're cleaning yourself. So I'm going to choose to believe that. Uh, we can leave that open there. Um, so cost. So what we want to do now. Why do we have the toss dot bat here? Why don't we just inline it here? Yeah, let's just do this. There, now we can get rid of the test um, dot bad thing. We don't have to worry about that. Um, so let's see, does the test still run? Okay, that's in, that seems decent. Nice. Um, so let's see, we have our code, we have our MTCP stuff, we have our any 2000. Let's just check if W make clean, clean stuff. We still have test.log. What's in our test.log? Oh, all the logging stuff's gonna be working now, kind of. I mean, it doesn't look like it's working, which is weird, but whatever. Um, I would like it if it worked, but sometimes things just don't work. Um, w make clean is not cleaning stuff. which is a little bit of an issue. Oh, because I removed that code. Um, and then we'll remove the test log as well. We'll remove all the logs. All right. So what's up next? So we have our test code here, test IO. And what we want to do is take the code that works and put it in its own kind of functiony thing, just so that we can be sure that the DOS spot and the test code are sharing the same code. So we're going to have to make a shared file. That seemed fine. So we'll have to like, uh, we can probably do this using linking stuff. So we'll have a, um, Oh no, we could probably just include a file. That seems like a bad idea though. Um, but yeah, let's do some refactoring. And then we will finally be able to get back to our DOS stuff. Um, which seems like I've kind of lost the API I was using. So let's just go back here. Um, excuse me. Did I delete all my bot stuff? That can't be right. Let's try reconnecting. Oh no, it's in public. Okay, so bot 
2010, 23, that seems about right. Code bot.cpp. Yeah, so we have the APIs here. Did we ever implement packet sending? And is this kind of the same hello assembly thing? I can't, I can't do that there, can I? Um, otherwise, did I move that into something like a file in my bot.old? It might be in bot.cpp. Nope, that's too old. Do I love my DOS? Not really. Bot.com drive C code bot bot.2. Okay, so yes, we will have to kind of unify our test code and bot code, at least for networking. So let's go to our desktop bot. Let's delete the slurp killer. Let's check our to-do list. We haven't checked that in a while. Yeah, that's stuff we don't care about at all. Oops, I'm using bindings that I use for i3. So drive C, code, bot, um, then we'll put bot.2.cpp. And we kind of want to look at what APIs we're going to be needing because the test thing is going to need it too. So we have a setup socket then we have the IP for send buffers and stuff. So ideally we'll kind of abstract this into its own API. Um, and then we'll have the test use those instead in order to send its data. And then we'll have the test program as just a program that runs um, using these APIs, but written in C. Does that make sense? You know, it might be good just to pack up the stream here while we're in a bit of victory. Just savor it, okay? Because we, we've done it. We've done it. We have solved. We have solved sending and receiving packets. Mission complete. We did it. We did it, Reddit. Ah, holy God. Okay, that scared me. I accidentally maximized it and that scared me. Um, I have a huge childhood fear of big text and stretch textures. So, um, I don't know how to explain that. It came from playing DOS games, but just anything that's like stretched scares me. I don't know if that's like an actual condition. Um, what we might do is play some games, perhaps. Um, probably not. I mean, I, I owe you more time for this stream, don't I? Um, so what could we do? Um, for anyone watching the DOS VOD, this is the end of the DOS VOD. I'm just trying to figure out what to do next. Um, 